The purpose of this video is to discuss a little bit about how amplifier classes behave in bipolar transistors and in junction field effect transistors. And in order to do that, uh, if you will refer to Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition, in chapter 24, we discuss amplifier classes, class A, class AB, class B, and class C. What I've shown here are reproductions of figure 24-3 and figure 24-4. These show characteristic curves for a bipolar transistor on the left that is figure 24-3 and a junction field effect transistor on the right that is figure 24-4 and I have labeled the various classes of operation and where the bias points would be under no signal conditions I sub B is the base current I sub C is the collector current that's in a bipolar transistor Notice that with forward bias we get conduction. With reverse bias we don't. More or less the forward breakover point actually for a transistor like this is about six tenths of a volt in a silicon bipolar transistor. The same as the forward breakover voltage in a silicon diode. In a junction field effect transistor, the uh, situation is quite a bit different. We have here, we have the um, gate voltage, and here we have the drain current. The gate is the analog of the base, and the drain is the analog of the collector, but although the characteristic curve is similar in shape, the, the bias points are different and instead of cutoff we call this situation pinch off with re normally with reverse bias we actually can get conduction in a junction field effect transistor or JFET uh, the in order to get pinch off we have to apply a significant amount of reverse bias now remember these curves are representative of the no signal condition if we actually apply a signal to one of these devices we're going to get fluctuation that goes up and down along this curve as the signal alternates and AC input signal alternates in the class A case it's always going to remain within that straight line portion of the curve here so that the output waveform will always be a faithful reproduction of the input waveform just bigger hopefully if we have an amplifier that's uh, represented by this slope of this curve the steeper the slope the greater the amplification will be in general now in the case of class a B in either of these curves the signal in class a B one ventures outside of this straight line portion of the curve but it never actually makes it to cut off during any part of the cycle cut off or pinch off so the device always conducts during 100 percent of the input cycle in the case of class AB2 however during somewhat less than half of the cycle but a small part of the cycle the device is actually cut off or pinched off so as the signal alternates we get a situation where during somewhat less than half of the cycle that's class a b2 somewhat less than half of the cycle the device is cut off one of the interesting things about all of this is that in order to get significant amplification with these class a B amplifiers as opposed to class a we need to drive them harder I've represented that by making the ellipse here as it were bigger and bigger 
class B operation during half of the signal cycle the device conducts during the other half it doesn't so in effect we get half wave rectification of the input signal waveform in order to get significant amplification though we have to drive the device rather hard now in the case of class C operation the no signal bias point is actually in the cutoff zone or the pinched off zone in order to get any output at all from the device we need to have a significant amount of driving power more than either of the other types of amplifiers or any of the other types in addition class C operation produces significant distortion of the waveform in the output the the further we go down this curve at the bias point the greater the amount of distortion we will see in the output waveform so in fact if we were not to, uh, to drive this device sufficiently we wouldn't get any output at all in class C operation so those are the basic characteristics of class A, class AB1 and AB2 class B and class C amplifier operation. Now keep in mind that the only true waveform linear amplifier is going to be the class A amplifier because in order to get a truly linear reproduction of the input signal waveform we have to stay within that straight line part of the curve. However, when it comes to the modulation envelope on a radio frequency signal we can get away with class AB operation and we'll still get a linear reproduction of the modulation envelope even with class B we'll get a linear reproduction of an amplitude modulation envelope in a radio frequency power amplifier but when we go into class C we can't get a linear reproduction of the modulation envelope and so the modulation will become distorted class C operation for a power amplifier therefore is used primarily in radio frequency applications where we have frequency or phase modulation in which case the amplitude of the signal doesn't change or continuous wave operation also known as Morse code or on off keying in which the signal is either full on or full off frequency shift and phase shift keying will also work with class C but AM old-fashioned amplitude modulation you don't want to use class C as a radio frequency power amplifier for that for that particular mode nor single sideband you don't want to use a class C amplifier in an attempt to to make a power amplifier work for a single sideband so that's basically the the situation here with classes A, A, B1, A, B2, B, and C in particular in regards to radio frequency power amplifiers.